Hi, Caleb from Brownhouse here. In today's product spotlight, we're gonna take a look at the K-Spec bolt carrier groups from KAK Industries. All right, so the first thing you'll notice about these whenever you just pick them up or you see them or you know, looking at them on the worldwide interwebs or whatever, um, you'll notice that they are, for lack of a better term, like serrated along the rail portions. And I say rail portions, I mean the portions that uh, the portions of the bolt carrier that actually contact the inside of your upper receiver that this thing rides on. So if you look at them, uh, you'll notice that they resemble like the sand cutter stuff that uh, Knight's Armament did a while back. And what this does or what these actually do is as your bolts riding in your upper receiver and your gun's getting super dirty, maybe, you know, you're in an adverse condition, you don't have time to take apart your gun, clean it, all that stuff, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Um, they will actually push dirt and debris out of the way uh, so that your bolt can continue to, to function freely and smoothly like it should, uh, which is pretty nice. So if like if you're like me and you oil the heck out of those parts of the, the bolt carrier, or these parts of the bolt carrier, um, it kind of gives me like, it, th this is a weird way to think about it, but I feel like I'm like distributing more lubricant as the bolt cycles that way. I don't know, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just my brain doing what my brain does, just being weird, right? Uh, but with that being said, so that's one feature of this bolt carrier group, or the carrier itself, I should say. Uh, but let's move on to the actual uh, bolt itself. So the bolt itself, of course, whenever we look at bolts, we want them to at least be like magnetic particle inspected, right, MPI. Uh, which this one is, so that's that's good. That's that's good for me anyways, because that's the first thing I really look for. Uh, but another thing you'll notice is that this has dual ejectors. So ejectors being those two, uh, those two detents on the opposite side of your extractor here. So those dual ejectors actually, so what they're going to do is they're going to provide more force against that cartridge as it's trying to eject out the firearm. And then once it hits the ejection port, it's going to be thrown out with a greater force. Uh, I would say, you know, roughly twice as much force because there's two of them, but I'm not a like math magician or anything. So, you know, whatever, don't quote me on that. Uh, but with that being said, that equals more reliability, right? Because you're, you're getting rid of the stuff you don't want in your gun anymore with greater force. So uh, that's good to have there. Also, so if in theory here, so I'm, I'm theorizing again, so let's say your bolt's moving with too much force for whatever reason, right? You have too much bolt thrust, um, head thrust, anything like that. So what happens in those cases, or your gun's overgassed or something like that, what happens in those cases is that your bolt's coming back forward before that, that cartridge has time to clear the, or spent case or whatever it is, has time to clear your ejection ports. Uh, if they're being thrown out with a greater force, then they clear that ejection port faster. I'm not saying that's, can still not be an issue, um, or still can't be, words are hard today. I'm not saying that it still can't be an issue, uh, because if your bolt velocity is just too fast, it's not gonna matter that there's extra ejectors there, but uh, it does give you more room for error. So that's a, another cool thing about it. And that's just one circumstance that I just like made up in my mind. Um, other circumstances for having greater ejector force are just all around overall reliability, right? So, I mean, anything that could cause your gun to have a failure to eject, uh, even though it's clearing the ejection port, uh, this will take care of that. Okay, so that's enough rambling about the ejectors. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, oh, the bolt is made of, it's written right on the side there, so I might as well say it, uh, 9310 steel is that bolt, uh, which a lot of bolt carrier groups, uh, or, or bolt manufacturers, I should say, are making them out of that. Uh, it's proven to work, so... Definitely no concerns there. Another cool thing they did with this is the gas key onto the carrier. Uh, not only did they just tighten it down and stake it properly, uh, but they also put like a gasket seal in between the carrier and the key, uh, which prevents any gas from leaking out between the two. Again, increasing reliability. Uh, so this comes in a few different variants. Uh, this is the phosphate chrome lined one just like a, a mil spec one would be, right? And that's just one finish it comes in. You can get them in full chrome, you can get them in nitride. Uh, this is a 5.56, you can get them for other calibers as well. And if you look at, at it compared to this, this is a nitride one, uh, even though the 
both of these, um, for what I'm about to say here, both of these are available in all those finishes. But if you notice, these two have differences other than just the coating. Uh, if you take a look at it here, you'll notice that there are no vent holes in the side of this thing. So in order to explain to you what they did different, let me just do a brief recap of why those holes are even there, right? Uh, so whenever the gas comes into your gas key, um, into your, your bolt carrier group, and it unlocks, whenever it unlocks, all the excess gas that was coming from the gas block is then vented out of those two side holes, out the side of your firearm. Uh, and I say out the side of your firearm, but also as the bolt's traveling back, uh, it's also going into your upper, and then that's another like one of those things that give you gas face whenever you're shooting suppressed. So all that gas coming into your face, like through the area around the charging handle, or just from the side, uh, just blowing into your, your face, right? Uh, which is obviously not ideal. You want to keep all that stuff away from your face, especially this face, right? So we, we want to redirect those gases. So what they did was put, and if you notice, there's two vent holes. They put four vent holes on the bottom. Uh, you really only need two of them, but if, you know, if there's a catastrophic failure in the firearm, uh, there's extra holes there to vent more of that stuff. So it's now venting down into the mag well which are into the magazine, right? Which initially, like, when I first thought about this or saw this, I was like, that's, like, why, 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 why would I want to do, why would I want all that junk blowing into my magazine as my firearm cycling? Um, and first of all, um, let me just, like, try and rationalize this because there was a bunch of testing done with it that showed it didn't really make a difference as far as dirt goes, which is kind of interesting to think about. Uh, let's talk about why that is. Now, first of all, these are made for firearms running suppressors. They work just fine on a firearm without a suppressor, but uh, these really shine whenever we're talking about suppressors. Um, also, they also, also like whenever you're shooting suppressed, uh, these make your firearm quieter. There's a quieter report, which is interesting, but I'm getting off track here. Um, talking about, those vent holes venting into your magazine. So whenever your firearm's unlocking, it's blowing that, that gas, that excess gas down into your, your magazine. Um, and then it cycles back, right? So first thing you think about, I don't want all that blowing into my magazine. Uh, there's plenty of testing. Like if you go to KAK's uh, YouTube page, for example, they did testing with clear magazines to show that it really didn't make a difference. Uh, which I found to be super interesting. So then, of course, I wanted other sources that have also tested it. And if you just do a quick search, uh, like on YouTube, for example, uh, there's plenty of people that have tested it and actually came up with the same results. So uh, that kind of put my mind at ease for sure. And whenever it comes to shooting suppressed, like, so we know the HK416 slash like BRN4, just other piston guns in general, shoot a lot cleaner suppressed. Um, but if we look at these two magazines here, this one right here with the super dirty brass, uh, this is one that I shot out of a, a BR, my BRN4, my personal BRN4. I shot half a magazine through it, and these rounds were absolutely filthy. Uh, and if you look at the testing from these downward, uh, downward venting bolt carrier groups, uh, you'll notice that they're literally no different than that. So it doesn't really add to or take away anything. Um, when I say add to or take away, I mean grime. It definitely takes away all the gas in your face and a little bit of the noise, interestingly enough. Uh, but this is just a clean magazine for comparison. And this is shot out of a what's supposed to be a super clean operating system. Uh, so what that tells us is whenever you're shooting suppressed, a lot of that gas that's getting onto your cartridges and like dirtying up your magazines and stuff, that's all coming back out of the chamber. It's not coming from the bolt carrier group. So this doesn't matter at all. Uh, so with that being said, I think I touched on all the high points there. So uh, yeah, that is the K-Spec bolt carrier groups from KAK Industries. Uh, so I know I did a lot of rambling in this one, but you know, hopefully you're able to keep up. I, I wasn't even able to keep up with myself. Uh, but with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, you're watching this on you know whatever streaming service, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, uh, if you need help with anything for any reason ever, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. 
Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.